Hello, welcome to the uh, ninth edition of our vlog series. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's very important in requirements management, uh, something that I'm uh, particularly passionate about, uh, and that's requirements validation, verification, and, and testing. And I'm joined by my friend and colleague, once again, Susan Manupelli. Uh, Susan's been, Susan and I have worked together for a long time, uh, 15 years plus, testing various uh, requirements management tools using various techniques, various software. I believe the, the most recent um, software you were using was IBM's uh, Enterprise Test Management Tool, something we used to call uh, RQM. Um, looking back on all those years and all those tools, do you feel as though it's been your, your biggest yeah, sure. challenge? So talking about um, the, um, the e ELM suite where we were talking about Rational Quality Manager, um, and also we were using that to test DNG. Um, really the issue, the biggest challenge is that they were two separate tools. So even though they were part of the same tool set, uh, the UIs were completely different. They were very inconsistent in how you would use them. Um, the review and approval aspect of RQM, um, you know, wasn't that great. And again, it was completely different from the review and approval um, that you would get when you were working with G&G. Um, and also because they were um, from two separate tools, in order to really get the traceability, um, it was that would be a challenge. You'd have to do reports that were sort of outside of, um, of the individual tools. And then one of the biggest things too was the comparison. Things change in RQM. It was not easy to find out what changed, even if you compared one test case to another. Yeah, I, I recall some of the challenges. I think for me. Um, the biggest challenge I had was the the UI inconsistencies, like you mentioned. I was I was in one tool, I'd go to another, it's completely different experience, completely different nomenclature, and then having to integrate, you know, between the tools and and just frankly having to go to a separate tool to do the testing, you know, was problematic and challenging sometimes. Um, so I think you 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 know hit an important topic in terms of having everything kind of in one tool. Um, and I'd, I'd like to show you how uh, JAMA does that. Okay, so in JAMA, the fact that we have testing integrated into the tool allows you to do some pretty neat things. So as you can see here on my desktop, uh, we have this dashboard and I can um, you know, define a relationship rule diagram in JAMA where you know, I can define that I want um, specific requirements to have validation points and test cases associated with them. And so that what that gives me is I can create some dashboard views for, you know, requirements lacking test coverage, or I can even look at, you know, test case summaries right, right on the dashboard. I can look at test case progress, uh, the priority of my tests. Uh, Java even allows you when you're testing to log defects, so I can track my defects here. And so, you know, for you and I, you know, we always have to provide test case reports and summaries, you know, up through management, up through the development team. Um, and so this allows you to, to have it all in all in one spot, which is which is really nice to have. Um, so the, the testing uh, itself in JAMA, you, you basically enter it on the test plan tab. And very similar to the way you and I worked, we have a concept of a test plan where you can define your test intent, the things you're going to be testing, your approach, your schedule, who's, who's on your team, your entry criteria, your exit criteria. And from there, as you pointed out, you, know, uh, you can send this for a review and you can get an official sign off from your development team or whomever you need to sign off on your test plan. And then once that's in place, you can go to your test cases and you can start to group your tests according to functionality or whatever makes sense for your, you know, for your grouping and your organization of your, your suites of tests. Uh, and once they're grouped, you can come to the test runs, and this is where you actually will be doing your, your execution of your tests. So I can click on one of these here and can start, a, start an execution. And I can start to go through each step and pass or fail as I go through. And the nice thing about JAMA, as I mentioned, is that you can actually go ahead and log a defect in real time. And I can go ahead and log this defect. And now when I'm saving this defect, it's associated with this test execution run, which is associated with my test case, which is associated with multiple levels of requirements upstream. So now if I look at a traceability view, I will see you know, my high level requirements traced all the way down uh, to the defects. When I have logged a defect, I can actually go in and I can take a look at this test run and I can see the defects. 
And if I have something like a uh, an integration to a, another product like Jira, for example, maybe my development team and you know is working in Jira and they love Jira, um, it automatically populates uh, the defect in in the defect tool like Jira. So a developer can come in here, they can make some changes, they can you know put in some comments, they can change the priority, the status, and all of that gets reflected back in Jama. So really nice integration, uh, you know, if if you're using something like Jira. From my perspective too, what would have been nice in my past test background is to have this uh, concept of um, suspect trigger, right? And so if I look at the relationships for this particular requirement. And I see that downstream, there's a validation of a test case, um, which is validated by link type. Uh, I can see that it's flagged as suspect. So that means that something upstream has changed and my downstream test case is now suspect. And what does that mean? Maybe I need to change it. Maybe I don't. How do I know? I can come to the versions and I can say, well, the last time I tested this requirement was in our release candidate one. And you know what what's different now? So I can compare version three to version seven, run our compare tool, and I can see exactly what changed. So as a tester, this is great to me, right? It's not enough to know that something's changed. I can actually see exactly what changed. And maybe it's just a spelling, you know, update, and I don't need to really change it. Uh, or maybe it's something more substantial, like you see here. And at this point, I can come in and I can, you know, make my change to my test, and I can go ahead and I can clear the suspect flag. So really nice level of granular control. Um, what, what's also good uh, with Ajama is we have these out of the box, and you'll like this, Sue, uh, out of the box uh, canned reports that have summaries of your tests, you know, um, how many blocked, how many failed, how many passed, uh, executions. So these are canned reports that, that come with Jama. Uh, if you needed any customized reporting for your, you know, specific needs of the organization, we have that available as well. So really nice, it kind of back to your point about having everything in, in one tool, um, you know, this, this is it and this is the benefit. Um, now, I know you've been at Jama for just about six months now. I'd love to hear your impression of, of the test management built in, what, you, what your thoughts are there. Oh, sure. Yeah, I do. I, all, I I definitely love how everything's in one tool and the ease with which you can just trace, actually verify the testing of your requirements. You can just go from requirements straight down to multiple levels of decomposition to your test cases. So you can see, answer the question, did your, did your requirement, are your requirements passing, which is great. Um, and also the ability to display related queries right on the dashboard. I think that's a huge plus. Um, the consistency of the UI between what you do for requirements, you know, creating a test case isn't any different than creating any other requirements. So it's a very familiar um, UI for both operations, which I think is important. Um, the review and approval piece is really a nice strong point for JAMA. And to be able to apply that to reviews for test cases um, is, is, really, is really great. And I just think it's a really streamlined UI. It, it really has everything you need and nothing that you don't. So um, yeah. I just think it's a great tool. And then there's one other aspect that I really like is um, the impact analysis. You mentioned being able to trace when something's changed after the fact. It's also to be able to say, hey, we're looking at making a change here. There's one button in JAMA, you click that impact analysis and it tells you all of your test cases that you might need to revisit if you make that change. I call that the proactive uh, method. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the impact, impact analysis is extremely important. And if, uh, if you are a developer in an organization, and you changed a requirement or you're about to change a requirement and you knew you had you know, 30 tests that are associated with that, you could run the impact analysis, see all of those and you could proactively warn your test team, hey guys, I'm about to make this change. You know, Here it is, I'll explain it to you. We can have a separate review and approval. Um, so it really contains all of that and, and controls all of that for you. Um, you know, I've often said to people, you know, it's, it's one thing to have your requirements in a tool, and that's the first step. Um, you know, define your requirements. You know, have your traceability. Uh, but if you're not doing your testing um, and validating those requirements, then you know, how, how do you know that you built the right thing, right? So, extremely important aspect: testing to to requirements, and this applies to any any requirements gathering process. Um, so, I'm glad we could talk about it today, Sue. Glad I could have you <laughs> to talk to you about it. And, um, and I'd like to thank everyone for their time and, and, and thanks for participating in the, uh, the vlog series and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.